Hi, I'm James Sizemore. I'm the son of U.S. Air Force Major James Elmo Sizemore. My dad was a career Air Force man. He chose to join the Air Force despite his dad's desires and wishes for him to join the Navy. His dad went in the Air Force. He started out in B-24s, NAV school, somewhere here in Texas, probably love it. And dad, he enjoyed the Air Force so much. It's all he wanted to do was fly airplanes. And that was his life. That was his career. And that's what he wanted to raise us up in. It was a military family. And I can remember my dad taking us to airplanes all over the place. Grissom Air Force Base, I remember. There were old planes like a B-29, B-17, probably a B-24, B-25 Mitchell. And I remember climbing inside those airplanes and having a blast. We somehow wound up on dad's tours over in Germany. And I can remember there were F-104s and F-105s, and those were being phased out with the F-4s. My dad was so happy. And as a munitions loading officer there with 49th Tactical Fighter Squadron, he got the choice to load some of the very first F-4s that came on base. And I can remember my dad taking me out on the flight line and sitting in some of those F-4s, and I felt like I was the king. I could not imagine being one of the first kids on the planet of Earth sitting in an F-4. It was amazing. I felt like I was bigger than life. Well, Dad always took me around airplanes. He even took me into some of the A-26s, especially the one that he flew in with, with Davis on, I believe it was Thanksgiving, 1968. It's probably one of the last times I got to really see my dad, except for Christmas of that year, 1968. But Dad flew in with Davis up to Dobbins Air Force Base from Marietta, Georgia. They flew in from Alexandria, Louisiana, where they were training in the A-26. And it was amazing. We had gotten a special car. Somebody came and picked us up from the Air Force, drove us out there to the base, and we got to see my dad fly in. And I was just enamored by how this plane flew. And I could not believe my dad was actually flying that plane. Well, we had a great Thanksgiving. It was short but it was amazing. We got to ride back with my dad in the car up to Dobbins. And we went up and climbed in the tower and we sat there so quietly and patiently while the tower control operator talked to my dad and Davis in the airplane. Well, they got clearance to take off and dad took off down the runway and we could see him turning and we asked, so is that it? Is dad flying away? Is, is, is he gone? And uh, we heard the dad's voice come over the radio and the controller saying something to him and it sounded like if the controller was saying you're okay for a pass. Well he didn't know what that meant and within a few minutes you could see dad's plane turn silhouette in the darkening sky that evening and uh, pretty soon you could the lights on dad's airplane became more clear, the plane got larger and within just a few seconds, Dad's plane flew by the tower. And I'm telling you, it flew by the tower as close as he could have gotten that plane. I'm surprised that he even had his wings after that. But that was the last time I saw my dad actually fly that plane that evening. But Dad and Davis made it safely back to, to Alexandria that night and uh, settled in. We got a phone call from him, said everything was okay, and we went off to sleep. It was in December of 1968 when Dad finally was able to come home, and he spent Christmas with us that year. That was the last time we would see our dad. He went off to Nakhon Phnom, Thailand, where he served with the 609 Special Operations Squadron. In the Air Force, and then that time, you didn't have a lot of time to spend with family. Your job was being an Air Force pilot, and that's what Dad did. He loved any type of airplane jets, prop planes, and he could fly them well. And I think the Air Force knew that, and that's probably why he was chosen to be in the 609th Special Operations Squadron in NKP, to serve with other men, other officers, who were well qualified to fly this plane. And there are so many names, I can't even begin to think of all the men that were there that served with my dad, and they loved Jim. He was a funny kind of guy, and I can hear in my head the voices of men telling me that served with him at NKP how much fun it was to be around my dad. There was a flight that my dad took, don't remember who would have been his nav that night, but my dad decided to smoke inside the cockpit. Well, my dad was sporting a mustache, kind of like mine,
but I'm sure his was better than mine. And somehow during that flight, my dad ended up catching his mustache on fire. And all I recall of one of the gentlemen telling me in that story was that dad's cigarette caught the mustache on fire and the mustache smoke filled the cockpit and it stunk. <laughs> of course, I'm sure dad came back with a burnt upper lip, as you can imagine. Now, how do you fly a plane, smoke a cigarette with a leaking fuel tank in the bomb bay and munitions on board and still concentrate during a battle? I don't know, but somehow dad was able to do that. Dad was also able on one flight during takeoff to control the airplane when they lost an engine. And this was a tragic incident in some cases where men lost their lives on takeoff and they weren't able to control the plane. The plane went into a roll and crashed on the runway or just on the other side of the Mekong River. But Dad safely dropped all his ordnance, dumped fuel, and made it safely back to base where he was awarded with a special flight accommodation. Now, I'm sure Dad had many close calls. I can recall some of the letters that we got back from Dad and how many times that not only could he see the faces of the men that he was firing on and dropping bombs on, but the many times that his plane was hit by either small arms fire or the AAA. But somehow Dad always managed to come back safely. And one night, Dad was preparing to go on a mission. He just finished his meal and he was about ready to walk out of the officer's mess. And he saw two guys sitting there with flight suits on with some insignia or some badges on that, that he didn't quite recognize. Now, understand that NKP had mostly prop planes and helicopters. And these two men stuck out like a sore thumb. But Dad walks up to him, being the kind of guy he is, and asks him, what are you guys doing here? Well, they'd flown an F-4 in, something was wrong with it mechanically, and they weren't able to fly it out. But well, Dad candidly asked, asked both the men, any of you guys want to go on a flight with me? And they probably looked at each other like, are you crazy? <laughs> well, knowing Dad, I'm sure he did. And he probably asked these guys, you guys want to go on a flight with me tonight on a mission? And this was a real mission. This was to go out and bomb the trail, seek out the enemy, and destroy the weapon systems that they had, their fuel supplies, and whatever cargo they were carrying. Well, one of these poor souls decided to go with Dad. And how did he fit in the back seat, or a seat, or any kind of seat, in the close confines of an A-26 cockpit, I don't know. Looking inside, I still don't understand how did you fit somebody behind the nav seat? Because it's almost impossible. And what he sat on, I have no clue. Maybe a folded up parachute or a cardboard box, but I'm sure it was a pretty rough ride. Now I understand that these missions that Dad went on was to drop bombs, to fire rockets, and drop napalm. That's what they did. They killed the enemy that was coming down the Ho Chi Minh Trail in northern, central, and southern Laos. Well, with the, back, with the gentleman in the back seat of the A-26, Dad went in on the strafing mission. Now, you can imagine the first plane goes in, draws fire, then Dad comes in and opens up. And can you imagine what it would be like sitting in the back seat, dropping down at a pretty fast rate, and hearing the guns go off and seeing the smoke and probably hearing the plane getting hit and wondering, are you going to make it out alive? Well, fortunately, they made it back to base alive. All three of the men, Dad, his navigator, and whoever was flying in the back seat. And all I can remember is one of the guys saying, when that gentleman climbed out of the back seat of that airplane, he was shaking, he was soaking wet, and he smelled. <laughs> I'm sure he messed his pants, because I can't imagine going on a flight and thinking that this is the last time you're ever going to see anyone alive. Dad, that's the way Dad was. He was a kind of a friendly, outgoing, outspoken man that I'm sure kept him from making rank several times. I know looking back through his uh, DD-214, there were instances where Dad was too friendly. He smiled too much. Um, he was outgoing. He was whatever. Then there were people that just didn't like him. We always thought Dad was going to make rank of a colonel while he was in Thailand but he never did. Um, you know, when he crashed the plane, and rightly so, he should have been awarded some type of air accommodation medal. But he didn't. He didn't get anything um, that we thought that maybe he would have received. 
uh, sad to me to this day in our family that Dad wasn't awarded the Silver Cross or he wasn't awarded any other type of air medal for his gallant efforts of not only trying to protect men on the ground, but also flying missions that were that dangerous. I was, I've was i been told by men in his air wing group that Dad flew over 100 missions over the trail. And I can imagine as he flew, all he thought about was his family back home, that he needed to make it safely back to base. I know in some of the letters that he sent, he didn't want to kill anybody. It was not his nature to go out and kill men, but Dad knew that it was his job, and in his missions, he had to fly those missions. And as an Air Force officer, that's what he did. I know my dad would have continued to serve in the Air Force long after his deployment out of Nacon Phnom, Thailand. And I know my dad would have retired very proud of all his missions he ever flew, whether it was in SAC or with the 609th Special Operations Squadron out of NKP.